best of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Yeah, it was a grind, right? I mean, we talked about it was going to be a grinding game and, um, you know, to, to kind of find where we're at. And, we, we you know, we, we thought we played good. We probably played good in, in spurts, but it was a grind. And um, the positive thing is that we did grind. Um, continually kept grinding everybody, um, and we we're fortunate to uh, you know get it done. You know, it's the Wild grind, have actually man. lost so many games. I got mixed up with my Dino clips there. That was from uh, I believe the Flyers game. Not that was the a Stars win. Game. Yeah, it was an actual win. I forgot what that, that feels game. like. I forgot what that. So no, know who doesn't get it? The executive producer for loading uh, in the wrong Dean no, Evison clips. No, uh, honestly, you could probably swap out a lot of Dean Evison post game <laughs> clips, and nobody would know if they won or lost. He's just stoic. He's throwing words <laughs> out like grind. Because yeah, because they're a grind. Uh, <laughs> it's all a grind. It's my, yeah, we it's had, the story of my life. It's a grind. We had to go back six months to find the last wild victory post game uh, press mm. conference. That's what. Mm-hmm. So uh, all right, welcome in Mackie and Judd, Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment Speculation Therapy. Uh, later on in the show, we're going to talk to our friend Dane Moore from the Dane Moore NBA podcast on the surging Timberwolves who just keep beating the brakes off bad NBA teams. But um, let's get into it. Every Tuesday, we go through our list of who gets it and who doesn't across the Minnesota sports landscape and beyond. Judd Zolgad, why don't you do the honors here? I think we all know what you're well, you know about this week. The viewers do not. The listeners. Well, the viewers don't know, do but not. they but they know if they've listened at all over the past. They don't know what's don't know, coming. Eight years. Yeah, but I but here's the thing. Right now, who doesn't get it? I come with receipts for this one. Who doesn't get it? Your local hockey team, the Minnesota Wild, and no, it has nothing to do with their uh, struggles, with their goaltending problems, with their uh, name, with their jersey. Uh uh-uh. uh the Wild doesn't get it. Because on Sunday, before they play the Nashville Predators, they are going to retire the number nine of Miko Koivu. And I have only one thing to say. It's not too late. It's not too late to announce today that you are creating a ring of honor and that Miko is going into that. But his number nine will at least remain in circulation and not be in the rafters. You don't get it because you're retiring a jersey for the sake of doing it instead of for the sake of greatness. Here are the receipts. Miko Koivu, who played for the Wild for 15 seasons in the playoffs, 11 goals, 28 points, a minus 18 in 59 playoff games. Those are the individual stats. But keep in mind, a minus 18, all right? Okay, so those are the those are the stats. But let me give you the mark of greatness, which is how far did your team go? Like, I don't care what your stats are because you – you probably want to stay on the cup, right? 15 seasons. I mean, you certainly made it to a finals, right? In the playoffs, Miko Koivu's teams, and keep in mind, he was the captain for a long time here, I think starting around circa 2009. Mm-hmm. Two and eight in playoff series. In those 10 playoff series, the Minnesota Wild with Koivu on their roster, 18 wins, 37 defeats. They missed the playoffs seven times, almost half the times in his 15 years. And yet you are going to raise a it's number. Team, it's, a team, it's a team sport. And yet you are going to raise a number. Exactly. It is a team sport. But did you lift your team up? Were you part of a team sport in which you lifted your team up? And the answer is no, you weren't. Number nine is hockey royalty. It is the equivalent of number three in baseball. Babe Ruth started it in baseball. You know what? The Twins. Number three, Harmon Killebrew. You know, I'm bad with numbers in sports. I couldn't have even told you Baseball royalty. Random jersey recall coming to Mackey. Number nine. Number nine for the North Stars slash Dallas Stars. Mikey Madano, 100% great player. Gordie Howe wore nine. Rocket Richard wore nine. This is one of the most beloved, important numbers. And yet you are going to take it out of circulation for a guy who in 10 playoff series, as captain for much of this time, helped his team win two playoff series. It's not too late to get it and to decide today that Miko Koivu 100% deserves a ceremony, a video, and a place in the new Minnesota North Star slash Wild NHL Ring of Honor. Then I'm going to help the Wild. In fact, I will pro bono. 
pro bono sports dad will help you create this we'll create a nook and a cranny and we'll put a surly tap in the corner of the x somewhere to to create this but for the love of god all that's good you're gonna raise number nine to the rafters to go aside to go alongside the number one for the fans I mean, I don't even want to talk about that. That's one of the most right. disgusting things I've seen. So anyway, you don't get it. And here's the thing. I'm willing to help you get it. I, I'm more offended by the fans. Thing. Like, first of all, the fans have to earn it, right? Like, they retired that jersey before the puck drop 20 years ago. After they had lost their team. Right? After they had lost their team, yeah. After fans refused to fund a... Uh... A state or an arena for billionaires. I, I actually side with the fans in that uh, argument. There's a but... long story to that, though. But All right. yes, yes. Okay, so I, I'm t- I'm a little torn on this, but I generally agree with let's not reward mediocrity. Okay, let's not. We don't need to be putting Michael Kadire in the Twins Hall of Fame. Okay, no. you know, yep. it's like we don't need to. It's okay. Michael Kadire had a really good career for the Twins. It doesn't need to be like celebrated or anything you can definitely come back for you know the 20 year reunion of the last time the twins won a playoff game in a couple years right it'll be great uh, they won game two against the yankees let's all come back and drink some beers and celebrate in a uh, bat and barrel or whatever whatever it's called um but in this case the, this is basically the first two decades of an expansion franchise the minnesota wild and miko koivu is the central figurehead of the first 20 years of wild hockey. Whether Judd likes it or not, Miko Koivu has the most points by 300, by the way, in the first 20 years of wild history. He has the most assists by 200 and the most games played by 300. Mm -hmm. He also has the best plus minus over the course of those 20 years ahead of Jared Spurgeon. Spurgeon over to Suter, back to Brodeen. Gabarek. So he's he's he essentially leads almost every single category. He's number two in goals behind Marion Gabrick. His counting stats are really impressive. So I have no problem with celebrating right. the most stable and important figure of the first 20 years of wild hockey. It's one of like 98 available numbers. Everyone's going to be fine. I feel like you're getting worked out. Like you're bringing in – here's where you cross the line. You're bringing in – other franchises number nines as if that should factor into the wild decision to retire this number nine he chose I, and, and, and i don't give a rip about jersey numbers like it doesn't I don't care matter that you to don't me care, i care that's all that's all i care about and look <laughs> okay. it's hockey royalty and we are but the thing is you are you are okaying and again the minnesota national hockey league north stars slash wild hall of fame that i am willing to give my time to help create to help create and honor people, because that's who I am. That will honor Koivu. There's a lot of guys. That's a great place. Ring of Honors are fantastic. But when you are going to retire a number based on counting stats, if Koivu had either stood out individually, in fact, you know what? Perfect example. I got it. Joe Maurer, okay? So Joe Maurer. They retired his number. Did not win enough. But you know what he did? He won batting titles, which for a catcher was phenomenal. Joe Maurer did things where his counting stats actually accumulated in something that at one point in time, especially for his position, but just flat out dominated baseball. If Koivu won scoring titles, like let's say two and eight in the playoffs, but he won scoring titles or, or Selkies as the best defensive forward in the national hockey league, I'd back off completely and say, okay, because to me, the number seven for Joe was a proper number to take out of circulation. But when you are taking a number out of circulation purely for, I worked here a, a long time. I mean, the last time I checked, by the grace of God, I have been at this company for what now, Phil? 10? At Hubbard, years? Hubbard Radio? Yes. yes. Hubbard. And, uh, and Score North, yeah, right. uh, 11, 11 years. Right. 11 guess, years. Who, guess who's not going to receive like some type of special plaque when, when he eventually gets his ass canned? What do you Judd mean? You, we, Purple Daily has been charting for the last 60 days I know, as but a I'm top not, but what 10 I'm Apple the football Hubbard podcast. Company, God bless them. They're fantastic. They are not going to, they're going to say thank you for your service. They might say, here's a pen, and that's it. I want to give Koivu a pen. Pretty sure, didn't you? Didn't you qualify for the, for the Hubbard pen a couple years ago? 
or were you? Did you just was that a ten year thing? I don't. Don't think I got a pen. I got a pen for my ten year. It's been twelve for mm. me. I bet it's sitting in Judd's mailbox and he has not checked it. I looked at my mailbox next to the to the holiday there. chocolates that are probably yeah. still sitting there. I wonder there. if it got <laughs> stolen. I tried to give those to Dex, but but he the holiday chocolate. Like I don't do chocolate. I don't do I'm chocolate. not a chocolate guy, and plus, you I'm know, with the diet, guy. with the diet, it's not so. Smart. I just feel like I feel like you're you're like personally offended by this, and I say, you know, it's, it's been 20 years. Okay, but how about we pick a pick a jersey? It's been 20 years Why? for God's sake. Why do we have to pick a jersey? Listen, he is the central figurehead of the first 20 yeah. years, a pretty successful 20 years of an expansion franchise. So I, again, I agree with your general sentiment. I agree with I'll your debate. general sentiment that am I cutting out or is Judd cutting out? No, right we're now? okay. We're good. We're okay. good now. Yep. I agree that we shouldn't be celebrating mediocrity here. But when you play 15 years and and you put up the numbers that he put up over the long haul, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna die on the hill like you are. I'm gonna let you die on this hill by yourself. Die on the hill. I'm off. I feel like help. your your level of frustration here is a little over the top. So I'm. I feel so. like when my opinion and knowledge exceeds the teams. <laughs> that they they should just call me and I'll help them out. So, are you saying that there is no player in the first twenty years of wild hockey that deserves to have their uh, their number Correct. retired? Absolutely, nobody. Is there it, anyone? Is Kaprizov the first player that even has a chance at this point? If it was up to me, yes, probably. Yes, I think that's correct. Because his and, and he, a chance he, is the. I mean, because to, to, Gabarik is more deserving at this point. I mean, if Kaprizov right, does this for another seven years or and something. if Gabarik then... had stayed here, if Gabarik had played his career out here, there's a very good chance 10 in the rafters. All right, Dex, where are you Are you retiring? Break the tie here. Are you? Which hill are you dying on? I, The fact they're already doing it, I'm okay with it. Like, I, I had to be convinced into it. I wasn't just completely against it. I would have... Decided that hey, why don't you wait a little longer? Why don't you just wait a little bit? We don't. I, I don't want to. I don't understand why they rushed into doing it. But the ends justify the means. Why they're doing this? It yeah. does. Okay. Here's what I will like. Where I will 100 percent agree with Judd. Because it's been since 1991. It's been over 30 years since one of the four men's teams has won a championship in this town. And by the way, three of the four men's teams have never won a championship. And so there's now like two generations of sports fans. My generation and Declan's, you know, like a half generation. And then there's the Gen Zs. We've lowered the bar so much with our sports standards in the Twin Cities that we don't even. I like that Judd's questioning this. All right. Like, I, I'm yeah. good with questioning it. Ultimately, yeah, yeah, listen, he's by far the leader in all these categories for the franchise, whatever. Like, I'm not going to die on the hill. But. We keep lowering the bar and lowering the bar, and that's you know because I can make anything a Kirk Cousins discussion. It's why people are still worried about well, what happens if you let go of Kirk Cousins? What's going to happen? What do you mean? What's going to happen? This team has missed the playoffs in three of the four years they've had him. Like the team's Correct. not good with Kirk Cousins. They haven't been above five hundred in like seven hundred days. And Kirk's stats are great. I like, mean, his but, stats but, are but so like, good though. I know, but like, but we might not go five hundred. Like that's not the bar. The bar, fi- the bar isn't five. The but bar isn't five hundred. The bar is championships. We've lowered our standards so much that we just instantly put Miko Koivu and his number in the Raptors. And so from that standpoint. I hear what you're saying. I feel like we fall in love with guys who just work here. They've been here a long time. They work here. You got to be. No, I don't. They're not. What are they doing? What? And, and this is a topic on which I'm passionate about, too, because of two things. Garnett. The yes. fact that 21. I'm sorry. And we could talk about, well, it's not going to happen as long as Glenn's there. I don't give a damn. Kevin Garnett is the greatest player in the Wolves history, and it ain't that close. Like, it's getting closer now, but it ain't that close. Um, and two, Randy Moss is in the ring of honor. How 84. And I know there's a lot of, no, there's not a lot of, of numbers to go around in football. It's Judd, true. What do you, okay. I get that. But Randy Moss changed the game of football. He'll, his on, number will be retired at some point. I think, but on, but my point is on Sunday, I'm going to see a number raised to the rafters of a guy who worked here. And meanwhile, you got two guys who exemplified, and one of them at least was a complete jerk, but I don't care about that, exemplified greatness. So we should almost set a standard here of, okay, going forward, I like I like that there's a distinction between Ring of Honor and Number Retired, right? Ring of Honor is a wider range of you can celebrate different things. You can celebrate broadcasters. You can celebrate, you can celebrate good players and longevity and all kinds of yeah. things, right? Yes. But if you're gonna if you're gonna put someone's jersey in the rafter so that no one can ever wear that number ever again, 
I think we have to have a set of standards here. So number one would be you have to have delivered a championship. You have to have been a member of a championship team, a Minnesota championship team. So that's the first one. If you don't, if you don't check that box, so like I'm sorry, Kevin Garnett would not have his number raised. Or, 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 if you didn't win a championship, you eventually were a Hall of Famer in your sport. Correct. So like you were yes. so great, Kevin Garnett. Yes. And you played the bulk of your career in in that city. So Hall of Famer, MVP, one M- batting even titles. MVP. But if you win an MVP, like Joe Maurer, yep. if you win an MVP, but you fall short of championship and you fall short of Hall of Fame for your sport, which yeah. I think he's kind of 50-50. I don't think you retire a guy's number. I, I guess where I feel I guess where I feel Phil about Joe like you do about Koivu is he did exemplify greatness for a period where he was he was one of the greatest in his league. So so like like you know, yes, Koivu played here a long time, put up a ton of stats and good stats too. But in my opinion, he didn't ever exemplify himself as as one of the greatest in his sport, and Joe did. So, like, I'm willing to go along with Joe there. But Moss, Moss is 84, not being retired to me is an affront. But Moss, uh, Pro it's Football ridiculous. Hall of Famer at this point, so Change he should have his number retired. So, championships, Hall of Fame, those are the bars we're okay we're setting here going forward. I like it. Okay. All right, Dex. Who gets All right. Who I have a who doesn't get it. I I thought this was going to be a who gets it. And then I I started doing more thinking on this and more research on this. And I've actually pivoted from a who gets it into a who doesn't get it. Yes. And my sports dad would be very proud of me for doing this. I like what he's going to do. The NHL does not get it for bringing back (laughs) the reverse retro jersey. So last year they had the third jersey, which is a smart idea. They, they, they're trying to also compete with the NBA. It gives teams more merchandise to sell, right? It's a cooler feel. And the Wild had these, what I thought, were pretty awesome, cool jerseys that were an older than North Stars. Some people thought they looked like Subway jerseys. I disagree. I think they looked awesome. They were awesome, these great North Star jerseys. And then the league said, uh, we're going to put a pause on it for 21-22. And then yesterday it's reported, hey, we're going to bring them back. Oh, sweet. So we're going to bring back those reverse retro jerseys. Oh, no. Uh, every team actually is going to come up with a new concept, and all the ones that we wore last year <laughs> won't be brought. What What are we doing? What's the What's the overall plan here? Because I thought these reverse retros were cool, and now we're going to get a whole new stew of jerseys. And I'll tell you what. We think mock draft Twitter is something. Jersey take Twitter police. Oh, that is a community you don't want to upset and piss off because they will give you your takes. So the NHL does not get it, in my opinion, for flip-flopping on what the hell they want to do with reverse retro jerseys. I love, I love it. you guys. One, one of you right. guys, I don't like. Right. I just don't get amped up about jerseys or jersey numbers. I don't know. I don't know if I'm I just do. like. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just like a jersey sociopath. I just don't. I don't have feelings or care about them either way. That's you. Yeah, I don't know. I just. You worry Sorry. about you, man. One of yeah. the one of the best advice my father ever gave me. You worry about you. <laughs> the Don't worry CEO about anyone else. You worry about you. Twitter just worries about himself. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. You know. You know who finally gets it? Carl Anthony Towns. I know we did an ode to him on yesterday's show, but once again last night, I feel like. So the Blazers are terrible. Like the Blazers yep. are you know, no Damian Lillard. They traded C.J. McCollum, and they're just running out a bunch of non-NBA players. So yep. like they're going to get beat by almost anybody, but. That's a game last night. No Anthony Edwards again. No D'Angelo Russell. You got a couple other guys who are who are banged up. And I feel like in previous years with Carl Anthony Towns, those teammates being out and him being sort of the lone wolf, pun intended, is an excuse for them to lose that game or get into a grind it game where they're down by eight and they're trying to come back against an inferior team. And I'm I'm so happy that the team and Towns have graduated and have gained enough confidence and winning reference points where they can just throttle the Blazers without any problems and then play with joy and have fun and not be complaining about officiating all this stuff. Like, um, I just think he has absolutely turned a corner and they're, they're winning games now and putting games away now that they would have made uh, into losses or sweats in the second half and the fourth quarter previously. Yep. That's my take on it. I think he's turned a corner here. I think he gets it. Yes, and I, I will continue to say that I think the presence of Patrick Beverly is so huge here. 
Like last night, he he didn't play like Cat. Basically, sat out the final two quarters. But his the dynamic he brings, I think, allows Cat to just be Cat. Like he doesn't have to pretend he is. I'm in charge here. That's all gone. And Beverly, what's interesting, and I think why it empowers Cat guys is because of this. Beverly's presence is is so large in a good way that that he like does some stuff that Finch does. Like he'll go talk to officials yeah. and Finch doesn't get mad. Um, but I really believe that more than anything, Patrick Beverly's presence on this roster frees up Cat to just be Cat. Very Whoa. rare that we have breaking news. Whoa. You saw this two decks? Yeah. Of course he's breaking it. I love it. Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee's breaking this news. Yep. According to my sources. Yeah. yeah sources my sources. My, my quarterback sources. My sources. Aaron Rodgers will officially be returning to the Green Bay Packers. There is no deal in place currently, but there is said to be a cap-friendly deal on the way. Mm-hmm. Retirement was a real consideration, and in the end, he is back with the oh. pack. Uh, Rapport. Aaron Rodgers has agreed to terms on a four-year, $200 million deal that makes him the highest-paid player in the NFL. He gets a in the whopping, NFL's history, holy crap. A whopping 153 guaranteed, and his cap number goes down. A monstrous commitment by Green Bay for years to that's, come. That's actually wow. contractually probably absolutely fine. So what they do, and, and we haven't, like, seen the full contract laid out here but right so four years 200 million dollars and i'm assuming that's in addition to the one year he has left here i don't know how that we have to figure out how that works but 50 million dollars a year but they have the flexibility i'm guessing to just push a ton of that money into like 2024 25 yes so they're gonna they are screwed cap wise but much like the saints post your breeze but all they care about is this year and next year right right but if you're if you're the vikings This is perfect. This allows you to basically now make a case to the Wilfs to, to as much as you possibly can, not concern yourself with 22, right? And because the Packers are essentially saying we are screwed in three years. Yeah. Or two years. So the point is, if you're, if you are popping as they're descending, like this works to, to me, if I'm crazy, I am ecstatic about this. I love this. This is fascinating. And now, of course, yep. now the quarterback carousel can actually begin Hello, to turn, let's get right? It going. Ooh, let's get it going. Is that the carousel right there? It's what the was carousel. That? What was that? Is that a home run? Was it through the power hole? Was it on the left or right side? It, yeah, it's but, the carousel. That's sure what that is. The carousel's going. <laughs> I, I did one finger. What are you talking about? I'm doing it with one finger. <gasps> Crazy. I'm not doing it with one finger. I'm not doing anything with my hand. Stop with that. Dirty minded. You're getting old yourself. I think when it comes to your quarterback carousel motion, it looks like you've got some uh, performance issues, Judd. Not going to lie. And that's where Valley Park Medical Clinic is Our here friend. to help, whether it's us or listeners of the show. Valley Park Medical Clinic is dedicated to providing breakthrough ED remedies to men in the greater Minneapolis area. They are the only clinic in Minnesota to use the True Pulse Protocol, one of the most effective solutions for ED available. Do not be ashamed, okay? I'm 52. I'm not ashamed, okay? Own it. Yes, yeah. just like Judd. It's, it's 2022. Judd owns his performance issues. <laughs> you gotta, you, hey, look, no sense in denying the truth, and if you can get help, why wouldn't you? The Valley Park Medical Clinic team is highly trained, which I think should be reassuring, because if it was the other way around, you wouldn't feel comfortable. Uh, they'll work with you in a discreet manner and will make you feel right at home. ValleyParkMedicalClinic.com. That's ValleyParkMedicalClinic.com. All right, I'll tell you another way to make you feel comfortable since we're talking about the region, okay? Chill Boys. Oh. Give me one word to describe how Chill Boys are making you guys feel today. Jack, you go first. I always go first. I'm, I'm thankful for my Chill Boys because uh, – cause the weather in Minnesota likes to change a lot, right? Like it was it was freezing cold on Sunday, and now it's a balmy 27, 28 degrees. So I can go from the long johns into that bamboo fabric just like that. And I'll tell oh. you what, then once golf season picks up here and I have been itching to swing a damn golf club more than any other thing lately, I can put on those performance brands that I can go and hit the links with my performance brand, Chill Boys Bamboo, Performance. It doesn't matter. It's damn Chill right. Boys. It's the, it's the most comfortable underwear on the planet. I'm going with free. 
just makes me feel free. Love it. Self-explanatory right there. So uh, Chill Boys, Minnesota-based company. You can find them online at chillboys.com. Somebody give me one more who gets it, who doesn't, because we got to get to day more. I'll give you one quickly. Okay. Wolves fans. All right. I don't care. Portland, Portland put out a bad team last night. Monday night, Target Center. First of all, good crowd, because guess what? If you win basketball games, people come out. Second of all, they had a great time. Wolves fans are starved. I not, not just hungry. They are starved for this. They're starved for fun. They're starved for wins. And you know what? They sure as hell aren't going to complain about, oh, Portland didn't play this guy or that guy. The Wolves won by 43, and these people had a great time. And it's my contention, damn it, they deserve it. They have, for those who, who like basketball, they have been provided – a buffet of crap for how long now? Yeah, Wolves fans, it's a blast, dude. It's a blast. I think you deserve this. Congratulations, you get it. And last night you had a great time, and and it's fun to see. I yeah. root for the fans. No man, it. the Target Center at the peak of the KG era with yeah. uh, you know program guy who would kneel next to the you know courtside seats and pound his little program on the court. Jimmy Jam during the peak of his producing days. I mean, it was a Jiggly. fun place to be. Jiggly boy. Yep. Jiggly boy. So um, I, I, I'm excited for whatever manifestation of playoffs presents itself for the Timberwolves. I, I'm, I'm here you. for it. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's let's pause for a moment here because we do have to talk some Wolves with our guy, Dave Moore, and plenty more on the quarterback carousel on Purple Daily today. Check that out. And please subscribe to both of our YouTube channels, the Score North YouTube channel and also the Purple Daily YouTube channel. Mackie and Judd.